everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today marks World Card Making Day. I try and mark this every year on my channel and I will link the other cards that I've shared up here. Today I've got a fun fold to share with you and as it falls over a weekend, I hope you will get some time to make some cards or maybe you're crafting with some friends. Maybe you've got something planned for World Card Making Day already. So let me know in the comments what you're up to. Today's card is inspired by an old card that I made about three years ago, which was a double twisted easel. But I also saw a beautiful version, which is smaller, because I done that as a double. I think it was like I think it was like twelve by six. So it was a it was a massive card. But this one I saw on Pinterest, and it was under the YouTube channel Mitosu Crafts. Hopefully, I'm saying that correctly. If you watch this, but they've got a version, but it's smaller. So I've done mine to five by seven. I'm not sure what their overall size was, but it's exactly the same way. But there's a little easel inside. So this is how it looks. Got a little belly band to keep it closed. Slide it off. I think this one would need instructions. I will definitely be hand delivering this one so I can show the recipient what to do and how to display it. But I would, um, you know, yeah, speak to them over the phone or pop an instruction in this one. But you have your front panels there. Open it up. You've got your space here to write your message. This little one is an easel, so you pop that up and then these two go behind and frame it. So if you've seen my larger double easel, I've already done these pieces, but I never done this little extra easel in the middle. I think it's adorable. Really, really sweet, got such an unusual style to it. You could have space on the back to write your message if you don't want to write it under these pieces. But I think it would work for many occasions. I can see a big birthday number in the middle of this. And I say during the tutorial, I think it would work for a circus theme. I kind of get that tent kind of vibe. You can see there, it kind of looks like the opening to a tent. But I think it's really sweet. I've used some beautiful papers from a new collection, which I'll show you in a moment. And it's easy to do as well. You don't need specialty dies for this at all. I've used oval dies to cut my top, but you could have that as a square. It could be any shape. It doesn't have to be the shape that I've used there. So let's get started. So for today's card, I'm using the papers from Craft Session Co. This was a collection done by Katie Skilton. Loved the papers. I did share this a couple of weeks ago in a What Did I Get video. So I've taken the colours there that I'm going to use. I've got those already cut. And then I've just used some of the flower dies that she's got in her mini envelope die set and then I totally forgot about the sentiment set I've used the sentiment set from my this one here floral verses but you can see what lovely ones she's got here and they would fit in the similar size that I've got as well so there is those options and she's got the dies there in the flowers and the stamps but I've just used the ones from that die set so first you want a five by seven card blank so you can see how mine was i'm going to talk you through this in a moment if you're making this from scratch you want a piece of 10 by 7 and along the 10 inch side you're going to score at five inches fold that in half and that will give you your card blank you then want to score to pop it so it's landscape so you've got the fold at the top and from the middle you're going to cut down so like i said i've already done this because i wanted to get my mats and layers cut if you pop it in a trimmer if you've got something like this, line this side up to three and a half. So that's the middle. And then using my blade here, I just cut right up just to the five inches there, which sits perfectly on that score line. OK, so that's one way to do it. The other way is along the open side here, mark with a pencil at three and a half and then mark down the folded side at three and a half. Draw a pencil line and then cut. You're only doing this on that one front side. OK, once you've got that middle cut and you've got these two sections, you're going to score from the bottom right up to the top left and then from the bottom left up to the top right of each of those sections. So you've got this almost looks like a tent, the opening of a tent. You could have it that way. OK, and I find that's best using a metal ruler and my stylus and just lay that down and score okay and do that on both sides once you've done that you want to burnish those which i haven't done yet so just give them a really nice burnish on both sides and you'll see they should now drop nicely this is a 280 gsm i think this one is okay so you want to have something like that so already it's kind of where we want it to be Next, I've got this piece of four and three quarters by six and three quarters, and that's going to go on the bottom there. So this is your space to write your message. So if you want a mat and layer in here with the sizes that I give you in a minute to cover the front, but that's where I'm going to have my space for my message. So I'm going to stick this one down first. 
Okay, I'm just gonna close that back up. I'm gonna cut myself two pieces of three and one eighth by four and a half. And I've already cut this one here and you can see how they fit in those sections there. So I've cut this one for the right hand side from the top left to the bottom right. This one I wanna cut from the top right down to the bottom left. So you just need to make sure that you cut each one in the right orientation. Okay, I also find if you try and work with a non-directional print whenever you're working with angles, it's um, it's easier to, to use those. And you can see I've got the image continuing because that's how it's going to be when it's closed with the belly band around. So you can see the flower joins there. And again with that one, I'm going to stick those ones down. So that's all of my panels decorated. Next, I've got this one here, which is going to be my stopper. So this is seven inches, the whole length of the card there by one and a half I think I did yeah and then I've got this piece which I've just done a little bit of embossing on and this is one and a quarter by six and three quarters so I'm going to stick that one first onto there then I'm going to stick some foam tape on the back of this piece and then we can attach it so I've just taking the backing off there you're going to run this one along the bottom now you might want to stamp your sentiment on this one and on the little easel in the middle you may want that to just be plain there's lots of ways to decorate it but now the stopper will open it then i've got my topper here for the easel piece you can see once that sits there it just oh it's such a pretty style to get that what i've done is i've got this piece here with a score line easiest way to do it is to take your shape you might not be using an oval you might have a circle it might even be a square it can be any shape for this piece whatever size your largest topper is or something that can sit be just behind your topper because you're going to stick it to this piece we're making we're making half of like an easel take a piece of card that's just bigger than what it is you're cutting and along the folded side have that at the top and just have your die just slightly overhanging there tack that in place and just run that through your die machine okay once you've cut it you will have something like this grab your scoreboard and if you line up the center like fold here with a track any track it doesn't matter and everything else is at the top there so get that nice and straight this one here you want to score roughly through the middle okay like so and then you're going to do the same in fact you're doing it on both sides so i'm just doing it on that one as well this side you're going to keep it as it is this side you want to cut down that score line like so and then just cut just roughly you don't need to get your ruler for any of this just cut up like so so you've made that tab so now it's all connecting you want to fold that so it's a mountain fold so you've got two mountain folds and what will happen is we're going to add glue to that and stick it on the card we're going to add glue to that front piece and stick that on and then with this stopper it will hold it in place so if you don't have any dies just make this as a square so you can cut that all easily by hand and draw it out with your ruler and then have that little piece attached it doesn't really matter what size this is as long as it's enough you know to stick it in place and it kind of holds there i've got what's that about one and a half squared if you want to get something similar okay so you can either stick this in first or stick this on first i think i'm gonna stick this on just so i can then see how it looks when i'm positioning it so i'm just adding the glue to that far right side and then I've just layered everything up there, heat embossed my sentiment, like I said, used some of the dies, and I just fussy cut one of the flowers there. So I'm just gonna sit that over there. If you lay it down flat, and then you can make sure everything's lined up, especially if you're working with a curved shape. Just give that a moment to dry. Then I'm gonna add glue to that square, like so. And I want to keep everything flat and fold that down. Okay, so this is going to be positioned in the middle, but you want it to overhang or overlap this section because it needs to then wedge itself against it. So what have I got there? One, one and five eighths, one and five eighths, bang on. So I'm just going to pop that there. So I've got it overhanging, I don't know, 
so it's up to you you can the further you bring it down the more it's going to stand up so that's quite nice and then they're going to go and tuck in just behind i think that's i think that looks good i might bring it down just a little bit more just slide that down just so it's a bit more upright there we go so just slide it down but the idea is is that's all hidden see under here that's going to close over the top and now we can close it with our belly band so this is a piece of a4 length or 12 inch 11 inch whatever it is by one you want it to just be able to wrap around the card well to be fair i'm doing it wrapping it around the longest the seven inches there but you could have it wrap across the, the cut there from the five inch width but this topper does connect the two and i just thought it looked quite nice having you know that triangle kind of behind and stuff but you can see if you do it that way if i just flip this around just so you can get an idea i would do the belly band thicker i'd maybe do two inches if you want to have it this way and then it would look like that so it's entirely up to you, but I'm going to do it this way, like so. And what I'm going to do is just add a little glue just on the very ends. Get rid of that bit in the middle there, because that's all that's going to be connecting. So I'm not too worried. So just wrapping the belly band around, don't score. You don't need to do any scoring, just wrap it and just get that in the middle as best you can. So I'm just going to hold that there for a second. Okay, so that's all dry. I just flipped it around because the hearts were upside down. But that's how it now all looks and it's closed. It's really lovely. I generally, when I make belly bands, that is the envelope for me. So I would hand deliver this or I'd just pop it into a box envelope now and maybe give it to them that way. But the idea is they will then slide this off. Like I said at the start, I think this one does need directions if you're not hand delivering it. And then they would open it up, see their message, and then you'd pop that one up and then the little frame, I guess, around it. I think it is. It's really cute. It's unusual. And I think it looks quite special. So I hope you've enjoyed this card from me today to mark World Card Making Day. And like I said at the beginning, I hope you find some time this weekend for yourself just to sit down and do some crafting. It might not even be card making, but any kind of paper crafts or any crafts in general. You know, I just think it's important to have that time to yourself to be able to, to do the things that we enjoy. As always, I appreciate you watching. I will link all of the products that I've used in the description box below. You can subscribe to my channel. You can click on my face. You can click on the subscribe button. And there's a little notification bell next to it. If you click on that, then you'll be notified every time I upload something new. Take care and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye.